because you can play it any way you want it. You could, uh, you know, basically pick a, pick a place to land, drive a car, and, you know, try to survive. And then once that, once that, once you get that first win, it's completely, uh, a complete addiction. You know, it's really, really intense. Yeah, I mean, you can see, like, when you watch a, a movie, you know, that has that Battle Royale style, like, you know, The Hunger Games, for example, that's the most common one used. Uh, whenever you actually put yourself in, in uh, a battle royale experience, um, just any anybody that's ever played any kind of video game can instantly fall in love with a battle royale game because uh, the suspense and the mystery, like you don't know if someone's going to be hiding inside a, a door, you don't know if someone's going to be hiding in a bush, behind a tree. There's so many different things that can happen in a, in a battle royale game and it makes it very, very, very difficult to uh, actually like calculate. So to to play it like a very, very high tier level uh, on a field with, you know, other players at that skill level it makes it a very, very, very entertaining uh, spectacle, I would say. Um, for me personally, uh, if you play H1Z1 and then you go to play the other BR games, uh, they're much easier. H1Z1 is very, very difficult. Like, you can ask, you know, around or other other players and entertainers and influencers H1Z1 is easily the hardest VR, and I can see why uh, it, it like it like kind of funnels you into like this competitiveness, like you want to do better. If you start off like I won my very first game ever with like one kill, you know, years ago, and now like if I don't get at least like 20 kills on a win, like it just doesn't feel satisfactory for me, you know. It's a much faster paced game than, than some other games, uh, PUBG especially. Um, you can you could play it very safe and slow if you want, but at the same time, like Matt said, once you uh, once you get that win and you want to start getting a lot of kills and improve, you you can turn it into an intense, you know, twenty twenty five minute game where you're you're literally sweating by the end of it. It's pretty awesome. They've they've done a really good job at the stage, and the, the VIP lounge is, is pretty awesome to, to see the the whole view from there with all the big screens and lights going off, and we have excellent casting. We do the we're doing a pit party tomorrow, which is always fun. They have a bunch of uh, games and really good uh, food. So I don't know. They they really uh, they really try their best to make it fun for everyone, and uh, they've been they've been kicking some ass. Yeah, most definitely. The production value that's gone into the H1 Pro League um, is top tier. It's definitely set the standard high for any other game that's going to try to you know, compete with it or, you know, do its own thing. Uh, Jace and the people at Twin Galaxies and the vision from all the people that are backing and supporting it, they've really gone above and beyond to make sure everybody's taken care of and try to push this thing into uh, the future of uh, esports. Um, for me personally, uh, <clears throat> I usually get up, try to get some food, uh, you know, go to the gym maybe and just get my mind right. Um, everybody's got their own, you know, uh, Everybody's got their own shoes that they walk in, you know. So uh, there's different preparations for different players. There's not really a set way to do it. Some people like to play as less. Some people like to over-practice. Some people, um, you know, just do you know, the nonchalant, normal daily things. Uh, we have the PCs here in at the Rio uh, and rooms sponsored by them, you could say. So we have a way to practice and play and stuff in our, in our rooms. And uh, very thankful for that. But yeah, it's it's not like uh, there's a specific recipe for success because we have, like I said, everybody has their own way of doing it. Um, Nal has Nal has this special way, you know. Usually, he likes to do his little thing. I'll let I'll let him explain that to you. But yeah, I like to just chill and uh, just go in loose and not try to overthink it too much. My team always tells me that I overthink everything, so yeah. <laughs> that's pretty much what I'm known for. Uh, typical day is waste. I don't know, early week, we do like Monday, Tuesday practice and Wednesday game day. Kind of just wake up, watch some YouTube, get showered up, get food. And then, you know, put on music, sit in my truck for a little bit, just completely zone out. Uh, and then uh, I like to arrive to the events early. I like to uh, practice and everything. I, I like to show up, you know, 10, 15 minutes early and kind of, you know, I don't know, be, you know, just be first. I always want to win. I always want to be prepared. I, I try to do my mind right. When it's game day, the game face is on. Everyone's my enemy. But, you know, I don't know. On the weekends, usually hit up the lake and go ride motorcycles, 
all this stuff like that. So we only work three days a week, so we got a lot of time to kind of do what we want. Yeah, there's a lot of time for extra practice if you feel like we need it, and if we don't, you know, we reward ourselves with free time. <laughs> We're men. Straight <laughs> up. <laughs> ten out of these, ten of these the fatigue, they fall under pressure. You can see the heart rate, you know, 140, 150. And you see our team, we're, you know, we have maybe one, 120, 130, but the rest of us, about 90, 100, very calm. We play the same we do on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. If we're playing, you know, normal public games, we play the same. You know, we don't, we don't treat anybody less, you know, respect or, you know, more respect. Everyone's a target. So I think it contributes to a, a solid team that trusts in our leader. Uh, all group of dudes that trust every one of each other, and then just like I said, straight up being a man, like just willing to uh, to put your uh, your nuts out there on the line. Yeah, I definitely echo what Anna said. Um, we stand out from the other teams uh, because of we're a little older, and even our young players are very mature. Yeah. And you can definitely see teams that should be performing much better than they are right now in this league not standing up are not, like, living up to their standards because I feel that there's a lot of stage presence and stage nerves that they're getting, and people are panicking, and they're just not playing the way they normally do in practice because we, we have much different practice days, typically, than how other teams are performing on land. So I think that our um, cool, calm, and collective approach with having the best in-game leader on our team has just honestly propelled us above everybody, uh, you know, by leaps and bounds. The game meta kind of changed as well. Um, be a little bit more aggressive, and we're all very aggressive players, and we, we're all capable of slaying. And it's just, it's just really worked in our favor, everything so far, honestly. Well, I, I do think that there are some things from the, the preseason three, to be specific to what you're talking about. Uh, that's what pretty much everybody alludes to. There were some things during preseason three, and a lot of the big streamers were still playing it. So when you have all those influencers on Twitch, obviously – they're going to assume the game was better then. But people are forgetting the things that were wrong with it and the things that have been fixed from there. Now, I do agree that there are a lot of, like, animations and jumps and the way your characters move and stuff that were more fluent, felt better, just overall better performance. Uh, and just uh, if you feel like – if you feel good playing a game, obviously you're going to want to play it more. So if they could tune back some of those animations – and things with the current gun mechanics, the current recoil on all the guns, uh, all of the combat mechanics, smoke fixes. They fixed a lot of bugs that were uh, on that early build of H1. And the game, in its current state, mechanically, with older animations, honestly would be a perfect combination to, I think, please everybody and definitely build from. I agree. Uh, every single combat update they've done has hurt the game and made a put a step farther back into uh, growing and, you know, making a more well-rounded game. And this is, you know, the last two, three years of them doing this. But at the same time, uh, a lot of people blame the devs. And it's not the developer's fault. They've been, you know, tuning it and doing their best they can with what they have. But when it comes down to it, to it it's the guys at top uh, forcing these updates that we don't ask for or we don't want. But like Matt said, uh, where we're at right now is actually pretty solid. We're all kind of don't have very many complaints compared to the past. So if we could get a little combination of preseason three and uh, the current, I think it would be an excellent game. They could focus on other things like maybe another map or, you know, tweak in the little stuff. Uh, very minimal. Uh, some of this, we're, we're connected with the developers, you know, because they like to play the game as well, you know. They're, they're our friends just as, as much as they help build the game. Yeah. So... They tell us, or, you know, hey, what do you think of this? Or, hey, I, I, I'll hit them up and say, hey, I noticed this change. Did you guys change this? And not, not tell them the patch notes. So they said, yeah, good, you know, good eye. So we have connections, but even the devs can only do so much. We, you know, we can offer it and we can get, a, you know, an idea out there, but it doesn't mean it's going to be accepted by the guy that, you know, says yes or no at the end of the day. A lot of things that go unspoken and never, like, see the light of day that people forget is H1 is one of, like, the grandfathers of BR. Mm -hmm. Like, Player Unknown, he like, came from working on the H1 BR mod. Like, H1 was a survival game. So the Battle Royale mode that was made for that survival game, which was made on an engine to play 
EverQuest, an MMO game, was modified by Player Unknown and other developers at Daybreak, and then he went on to make his own version of that game, which was Player Unknown's Battlegrounds, and then Epic Games then copied his VR formula and applied it to their graphic engine, and then you have the byproduct Fortnite. Like, that never gets any lot of day or any media coverage for some reason, and if we can just pause that for a second and think about if H1 or whoever takes over H1, if Daybreak keeps it or if someone else takes it and builds upon the fast-paced action, the gritty, you know, horror, zombie survival feel of H1Z1 and they perfects it. And the world stuff. Yeah, if, if they could go back and perfect that from just it being a mod on a game that it was never intended to be on that platform, perfect it like they've been trying to do, um, H1 will surely, surely, surely like have a resurgence, no, no doubt in my mind. Jay Fall 2019. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of faith in Jay. He's, he's, a, he's a super big advocate of the game, supporter of the game. He loves the game. He plays it nightly. You can see, if you follow him on Twitter, you can see how, how much he cares about it. And he communicates. He takes his time out of his day to communicate with the community and talk yeah. to him. Yeah. People think he's just joking me, but he's, he's at home, you know, 2, 3 in the morning talking to kids like, yeah, man, I'm trying, you know. Yeah, he's, he's a good dude. He's a very accomplished person, and like you can tell, he, he cares about it, or he wouldn't be spending his free time, you know, playing H one Z one, and and like <laughs> like Jr. said, going out of his way to talk to the community and let us know what's going on with him. So, I mean, you can look at the the PlayStation reveal. Uh, the PlayStation beta went live today with H one Z one, and it's got over a quarter million players already. Like, it's, it's insanely insanely popular okay. right now with everybody. So. If that kind of traction gets going, it's a big thing that springboarded PUBG and springboarded Fortnite into, like, their huge numbers. A lot of people that have never tampered with PC games that are strictly console gamers are going to be able to touch H1 for the first time. And, and that's, feel. yeah, and they're going to understand what's going on. They're going to, it's going to spark their curiosity of checking out the Pro League, checking out, like, us on the PC version, taking it to the competitive level where I know that I, any game I play, whether it's solitaire or if it's, H1 or World of Warcraft or MMO, doesn't matter what I play. I want to be the best. I want to be rank one. And, like, I know there's tons of people in the world like me. So if they play on the PlayStation version and they enjoy it, then it's probably not a far-fetched thing to think that they're going to jump on the PC version and try it out too. Mm-hmm. Yeah, at this current state, absolutely. They have no option. They're on their last leg. It's hard to say, you know, it's brutal. But uh, we're not looking pretty. And we're counting up the PlayStation at least. To uh, kind of save us on the PC side, because we were kind of blown. Away. We were not kind of. We were very blown away by how well they did with the PlayStation version. Like they, we were expecting it to be terrible, but they actually did an excellent, excellent job. So I think, I think at giving the world access to uh, an excellent game that may have a bad reputation is is very beneficial for everyone. They'll make their money. If, 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 they, if the game survives, they'll make their money. Yeah. The, the comment, like, I agree with what JR said about it being, like, kind of like a last one thing, but I also come from, like, the era of, like, League of Legends, for example. Like, I was an mm-hmm. Ampro League player in Season 1, Season 2, and the game, um, the game model, or, like, the business model for video games, honestly, should change all the way around to all games should be free or very, very, very cheap, and there should be some sort of cosmetic features in the game that you could, you know, spend five dollars on, ten dollars on, changes your character, gives you a skin, gives you an item. In my in my opinion, that's how all video games should model their game after. Like there should be no uh, upfront price that makes the game, you know, you buy it once and it's done because then that doesn't want that, that doesn't like promote players to stay on your product. That doesn't that doesn't promote influencers on Twitch to keep showing people your game. Like Twitch and streaming on YouTube and uh, Facebook, like all of these things are so powerful in the gaming community, and I don't under, I, I don't think that game developers and game companies see the bigger picture. They only see like the quick dollar. They see, if they saw the bigger picture and would make all the games either really cheap or free and have that cosmetic value, or like skins in the game. Like our game has skins. H one Z one has skins. They're tradable. There's a there's a secondary market for those. Like I know people that like make a living off of it, you know, like buying and selling skins. Like it, it's a thing that actually like helps someone. Put food on the table for their family. The new, the new era, and it's is, through a video game. You know, like that, that's crazy to think about. The new era is no longer pay to win; it's pay to look good. Yeah, you, there doesn't need to be features where you buy like 
uh, kill. Yeah, you don't need to buy a weapon with real money and, and be able to beat everybody on that server. You need to be able to buy something and make yourself look cooler so you intimidate those other players that doesn't have that. You know, more. There, there's so many layers and levels that, that people can, uh, can unlock. Yeah, and it's actually insane to think about. Yeah. Literally, the combat update. Every time this happens, every... so two years ago, after TwitchCon, when Doc got popular and the game started rising, they, uh, or uh, before Doc got popular, I'm sorry, and they had the first invitation on TwitchCon, and then we got, like, you know, probably 20,000, 30,000 people after that to come aboard. They update the com- they did a combat update and changed jump and changed all these four mechanics, and they lost 60% of the players. Uh, then here comes TwitchCon again, uh, Invitational comes, Doc appears, all these people show up, boom, next year after that, you see 150,000 people. Then, boom, you see Combat Update, and there goes 60, 70, 80, 90 percent. And the sad thing is, they know they, know they could have reverted it, or they could have gone back, you know, even farther and just done something different. But instead, they tried to ride it out and didn't really communicate well with the the, the community. They kind of just played the cards wrong. It, it, it seemed like an investor made the decision instead of a developer that knows what they're doing made the decision, honestly. Yeah, it was definitely... Um, I agree with what Nas said, um, but I do think that there's more to it on the back, like the back end, the things that was, the public will never know. Because there were a lot of... Um, problems with the game that everyone talked about. Ninja talked about them. Dr. Disrespect talked about them. Some, it's Shred- Like, all these people that played the game and streamed the game after the H1Z, uh, we call it Z2, Z2 map came out. Um, a lot of influencers were playing the game and streaming the game and having fun with it, but when a bug would pop up or a bug would, like, ruin the game or, like, m- make someone frustrated, then it kind of, like, catches fire. Like, it, it becomes like a wildfire throughout, like, um, stream chat and just Twitter and all the all that gusto was never getting dealt with. So like the people that were behind the scenes at the time, like at Daybreak or whoever was making the calls, weren't putting their priority on fixing the game. They were putting their priority on making crates for to, skins. Yeah, for skins to get more money out of players. So it's almost like they were like looking at two different options. Like do we fix the game and hope it lasts forever or do we go ahead and try to milk as much crates as we can before it goes away? Sure. Some, uh, I know they've had a problem with staff uh, numbers for a while, but even there, after our after Doc's explosion at TwitchCon, and uh, when we had 150,000 convert concurrent players, even then, I don't know. Yeah, they they definitely dropped the ball on the big time. Yeah, I don't know if they just forced all the people to get on the creative side or what, but they they slacked on updating and fixing crucial bugs that eventually like that the wildfire. You know, everyone like, all right, PUBG, whatever. That's, they 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 fix their bugs in a week. Yeah, the, the timing of them not fixing the game while there were a, another VR game coming because Fortnite right. wasn't yeah Fortnite wasn't a, a thing yet. It was PUBG. You know, player unknown got his Unreal Engine um, belief and created PUBG. And even in the early alpha stages, like the game was fun and stuff, but it was way more militant uh, and it was way slower. Like you just you literally in PUBG, it's not very exciting. There's no way it's ever going to be exciting unless they put it on a different map and made it way smaller and more. Like jump out yeah. Of yeah, like there's a lot of mechanics in PUBG that just slow the game down and make it clunky. So that's that's why a lot of the diehard H1 players was never converted. We just played PUBG like as a backup plan if we had to, you know. Because uh, mm-hmm. BR, we know we just knew BR as a genre is gonna it, it is the thing. It's yeah. Like BR is what gaming is gonna you know be for the next however many years. Like we're no, the best in the hardest game. Right, and, and we're the best in the hardest game. For sure, and like we're like, I can get on Fortnite right now with anybody in my squad, and we can literally play out. Like we do the same stuff that you see all the big streamers do. Fortnite is not a hard game. It dropped funny before. It was a cool thing that dropped funny. Like yeah, like that. me and Anna both played the, the PVE version of Fortnite just for fun when we were like Great hanging fun. out one night. Yeah, it was yeah, really yeah. fun. And we could go into the multiplayer lobbies and just play out, kids. Like before, before places on the map even had a name. So I guess you could call it mm-hmm. Fortnite hipsters, honestly. Sure. But. <laughs> Each one, man, it, it had literally had so much potential with such bad timing. To go back to what I was saying about the timing thing, like PUBG was coming out, Daybreak was not fixing the bugs that were introduced with the combat update and the things that the streamers were complaining about. 
So, obviously, those guys, if they're having a bad time when they're streaming, their job isn't to play H1Z one. Their job is to entertain their community. So, if they're having a bad time, they're not going to stream the game. So they slowly convert over to PUBG. And then, once once it was like the final straw for Dr. Disrespect, that was kind of like the, the big decline in the numbers that you probably saw. Uh, you know, everybody's just going to, you know, go with their favorite influencer and play whatever they're playing. And then uh, Fortnite came out with the VR mode, and they went free to play on that. And that was a smart decision. Mm-hmm. And all of the skins in Fortnite for the longest time were very expensive. But when the game becomes so popular, it doesn't matter how expensive the skins are. So Fortnite never even had to tone down the price of their skins. Like, I mean, you can buy skins in our game for cents, like you know, a dollar for, like, cool-looking skins. You have a $10 outfit for you. Yeah, good. like, in, in Fortnite, you literally purchase a... Xbox game, basically. The, the price of an Xbox game or a PlayStation game, you know, two skins and you could have bought a whole other video game. And, and that skin is locked into your account forever. It's not tradable. It doesn't have any kind of internet value or, or currency, you know, tied to it at all. It's just a thing on your account forever. But I mm-hmm. definitely think that Epic um, could have done something better with their skin system, but if they're having that big of a player base and that much... I mean, better better from the gamer side. Yeah. But for a business side, that yeah, I mean, they're killing it. Yeah, obviously, that's why you see a hundred million dollar tournament coming from it. Yeah. But it's sure. Yeah, they they, I, they did it from a business standpoint, which is excellent. But for the the gamer side, yeah, it could be done a little bit better. Yeah. 